another ultralight here. At least in the older days, it was an ultralight. Well, I think we'd still call it an ultralight, at least to define what the aircraft is. We're standing in front of a Quicksilver here, probably the most popular ultralight ever made, and we're visiting with Steve Watts, who owns this airplane, and we're here at the Midwest LSA Expo 2011, but we're looking at an ultralight, or at least what we used to call an ultralight, and that's fine. We'll stick with that name. Yes, sir. I believe the number, and I've heard you telling a couple of customers here, is something in the neighborhood of 14 or 15,000 of these things flying around the world. Uh, many, many of them in the United States. They got started a long time ago, and it, the aircraft has evolved a great deal. It's not the same one it was back in the old days, but uh, it's still a very charming airplane to fly, very easy to fly, and I heard you say something else that's very significant about this airplane. It has almost no accidents, uh, fatalities, anyway. Fatality. They're real serious stuff. Of course, people bend airplanes. That happens all the time. But the reality of it is, is I don't know if there's ever been a fatality in a Quicksilver, but whatever the numbers are, it's a terrific safety record. Yes, sir. So thanks for bringing your airplane out here to the LSA show. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to have it out here. I'm impressed with the people that's come up to talk to me about it. This is a MX-2S and that I have qualified wings on this plane. I have a 582 inverted and we have hydraulic brakes on it, Hager wheels on it. Uh, Comtronic helmets, and it's just a fun plane to fly. Now you have a sticker here. You have it on both sides. That's the way it ought to be. It has to be vertical because it doesn't have a lot of side area to put this stuff on. So it says experimental here. That allows you. So you built the airplane yourself then, and that allows you to have pretty much anything you want within the airplane's capabilities. Yes, sir. That's why you can have the bigger engine and the heavier duty brakes and wheels and tires and like that. Um, did you build this yourself? I did. And how long ago did you do that? Three years ago. All right. And I qualified it as an ESLA. Uh, it is an ultralight trainer, but now it is just an experimental. Okay, so you airplane. went through that process. We all had to go. Well, many people had to go through a few years back. Yes, sir. Where they used to be a two-seat ultralight, and that's what we all knew them as. But FAA said, nope, they got to be something else now. It's going to be an experimental light sport aircraft. But it's one of a special group that got transitioned from ultralight to ELSA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a fun transition. I had a good DAR and came in and looked it over. And being a experimental plane, you have to have it labeled where anybody sits down in a seat can fly this airplane. The labels and stuff are on there. That's why it's got to be on both sides. It's got to be on both sides. They have a, a sticker you have to put on there and tell people this plane does not conform to national standards and this is an experimental aircraft but it is a ball to fly and none of those things change the fact that this has been a very safe airplane to operate for very a lot of people most airplanes have accident records but due to quicksilvers that somebody's wanting to show off it's not the airplane the yeah, airplane, this airplane cannot is... be tore up it is very safe so i got to speak to something else here it uses you can see them top and bottom too. It uses all wire bracing. Now you don't see a lot of that these days anymore. It was very common in the early days of ultralight, but there's a whole set of rigging here. It's a, called a wire braced airplane. It's actually very strong. It's actually very low drag too. This is a, not an airplane meant to be particularly sleek, but there's a fascinating video, video of a man named Jim Hanbury who was a parachute producer flying along in a single place version of this, but the construction was the same and he had a wire snippers with him and he proceeded to start cutting wires in flight. And he cut one wire, I think he started with the back wires actually, mm -hmm. cut the back wire here, nothing. Shaking the stick, nothing. Another wire, another wire. He got down to one wire on the airplane and this thing still, despite his horsing around with the stick, stayed together. He didn't cut the last wire because that would have been all it took. Well, they wanted the plane to fail. They were testing the power, the safety chutes. He made parachutes and he and was trying made to- made parachutes and he clipped the third wire and put it in a dive pulled it out and the wing collapsed. He yeah, the, the, the deployed, last section of the wing broke off. Yeah, yep. it didn't break, it just went over. But quite a statement that you could remove all that. That's the primary strength making right this here. airplane. This and is the yet, number one wire, right? And here. yet it took almost all of the load on a single wire. So it's a pretty amazing story about this airplane. And they turn around and that's where the safety chutes have come in from the other airplane. He, after he got, he got it, he stood in the seat, looked at the chute, and he bailed out of the airplane. It's a great piece of video from many, many years ago now, but it spoke to this airplane and its capabilities for a long time. Do I understand that you're also a volunteer here at the Midwest I am LSA a volunteer Expo? here. I've been here every year. We've had this, the seminar and love it. Well, I want to thank you for that as well. I uh, see we've got right behind us here, we got the airport manager, Chris Collins, looking over us as we do our work. 
but it's a great job they put on the show, but you cannot do these things without a small army of volunteers, so thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Steve, Appreciate great it. talking to you here at the Midwest LSA Expo 2011.